Okay. Hi class, welcome to the online session. We are going to discuss on the slides for myocardial infarction. And we have uh, seven slides for, to, for this session. We have slide 201 that is myocardial infarction uh, 48 hours followed by 202 myocardial infarction 4 days 203 myocardial infarction 8 to 10 days and then 204 myocardial infarction 1 month and 205 myocardial infarction 6 months we are also going to include number 5 that is acute fibrinous pericarditis and slide 89 constrictive pericarditis so let's start with slide 201 uh, 201 is myocardial infarction, first 48 hours. So, uh, myocardial infarction, its layman's term, is heart attack. And this is attributed mainly, in 90% 90 of cases, to an atheromatous plaque okay, within the lumen of the coronary artery. And it undergoes an acute plaque change, uh, wherein the blood flow would become 10% or less for more than 20 minutes and it will cause the heart attack. In 10, uh, it will cause the necrosis okay, uh, of the affected area. In 10% of cases, it would be caused by vasospasm or an embolus like a mural thrombus located in the chamber or a paradoxical embolus because of the presence of congenital uh, uh, defect. Uh, it can also be due to a hypoperfusion with shock or decreasing the blood pressure or the presence of even vasculitis or hematologic abnormalities like sickle cell disease. So again, myocardial infarction would occur if the, if the lumen of uh, or the blood flow of the coronary artery would be reduced to less than to 10 percent or less okay so let's go over the slide uh, first of all when we look at the autopsy of patients with myocardial infarction that's uh, during the first 48 hours uh, we would be able to identify the presence of uh, mottling when you say mottling it's like uh, it's it has a color that is similar to the eggplant. Okay, it's it's purple or violet. Violet, uh, and we look into the uh, changes that we would see with the cells. First thing that I would show to you would be the presence of eosinophilia. Okay, so. This area is darker than this portion and if you're going to look at the high power magnification okay, here, you can see that this portion is slighter. You can see the presence of the nucleus and this portion is darker, more eosinophilic with absence of the nucleus. So uh, these are viable myocytes. These are uh, necrotic myocytes okay so it's a sign of of necrosis or cell death for uh for hyper eosinophilia so let's look at other areas okay so like in this case so wherein we would see a lot of inflammatory cells so during the first few hours the earliest sign that we would uh associate with with infarction would be the waviness of the fibers so you can see the presence of the waviness of those fibers okay. okay so you can see the waviness of the fibers in this area okay and then we also would see the presence of neutrophilic infiltrates okay so neutrophilic infiltrates uh, there would be the presence of edema. Okay, usually, the, the myocytes are very close to one another, causing the synthetial movement. But because of the presence of, 
of infarction, there would be the leakage of some of the cell contents and okay as well as uh, permeability of the of the vessel walls the small blood vessels leading to edema um, there would uh, there would also be the presence of uh, the, the presence the absence of the uh, nuclei okay which would be one of the nuclear changes that we would observe in coagulative necrosis. So uh, there is absence of the nuclei, which we would call as karyolysis. Okay. Sometimes you would see the presence of some of the cells possessing the nucleus, but they, they would be faded. And it's also a sign of karyolysis. Uh, the other two nuclear changes would be karyorexis, wherein there's the fragmentation of the, the chromatin as well as pycnosis when you would see the presence of a diminution of the size of the cell as well as that of the nucleus but in this case this area would show presence of karyolysis okay. so next slide is 202 which is MI or myocardial infarction four days after uh, uh, for this particular slide, you would still be able to appreciate the presence of necrosis. Okay. There's a lot of red blood cells in the area. So you would see the presence of mixed infiltrates in the first 48 hours we would see the presence of segmenters or neutrophils. But here you would see the presence of histiocytes, uh, still the presence of segmenters, you have plasma cells in the area, you have red blood cells. The histiocytes are beginning to disintegrate uh, and that's due to the presence of the macrophages that would be uh, eating them up. Okay, so I just want to show to you the other areas okay. so you can see the presence of the um, faded or disintegrated myocytes you have a lot of hemorrhage in the area okay. so you can see the presence of the of of the disintegrated or disintegrating myocytes with a lot of inflammatory cells okay so the inflammatory cells again would be mixed composed of segmenters and some lymphocytes okay next is slide 203 and this is myocardial infarction 8 to 10 days after so, um, in this case, what we would see would be more of the granulation tissue. So, that is what we are going to look for. So, what is the definition for, uh, for granulation tissue? It's a form of tissue repair wherein we would see the presence of, of fibrosis, uh, presence of angiogenesis or blood vessel formation as well as mononuclear cell infiltrates so as you can see in this particular area uh, there would be the proliferation of vascular channels there is the presence of fibrosis and there is a presence of uh, inflammatory cells okay. So this is the blood vessel. You have fibroblasts in the area accompanied by inflammatory cells. Okay, so you have inflammatory cells, histocytes. So this is the granulation tissue that you have to look for. I'll just uh, look into the other areas of the slide so that you would get acquainted with it. This one is one big fibrinous fragment, okay? You can see the presence of fibrin 
in the presence of red blood cells okay, it's like have uh, looking at a thrombus this one also okay you can see the presence of fibrin in the area okay fibrin and red blood cells actually those are not what you call as um, the granulation tissue okay next we have slide 204 so slide 204 is myocardial infarction one month after so it means that we would have more of the collagen deposition so this would be the area the you have here the uh, myocytes myocardium here you have wide areas of fibrosis or dense collagen formation oops you can still observe what what are these blood vessels presence of inflammatory cells okay so this is still granulation tissue so in one month you still would be able to observe for tissue repair and uh, you still would be able to identify for the presence of granulation tissue formation although you have wide areas of fibrosis the, uh, the presence of collagen deposition okay so i'll just look around so that you get acquainted with the slide okay so you have here a lot of blood vessels okay that would be part of granulation tissue there you can see a lot of blood vessels okay you have fibrosis you have okay wide areas of fibrosis a lot of blood vessels and this is slide 204 okay slide 204 okay next we have slide 205 uh, fortunately this is not a good slide because it has a lot of uh, those artifacts okay so just look beyond it okay and try to uh, go around okay so you would see large tracks of myocytes one thing that is absent here would be absence of necrosis absence of uh, absence of granulation tissue there's a lot of separating collagen uh, collagen's deposition okay and this would be sign of myocardial infarction six months after okay so again absence of granulation tissue wide areas of fibrosis separating the myocardial fibers and that is part of myocardial infarction six months after and then we have the slides for the pericarditis slide number five is acute fibrinous pericarditis okay so i think you are already familiar with this particular slide uh, when we are talking about acute fibrinous pericarditis uh, we have to look into the makeup of the pericardium so you have here the fibro adipose to fibrocollagenous tissue okay and uh, that is the original makeup of the pericardium uh, the pericardium here appears to be thickened and it has a lot of this fibrinous uh, substance which is eosinophilic okay uh, this is accompanied by uh, inflammatory cells so here you have segmenters okay so this is acute fibrinous pericarditis uh, I think this is more of a long-standing because you can already identify the presence of fibroblasts uh, acute fibrinous pericarditis is the most frequent type of pericarditis uh, this is most commonly caused by a myocardial infarction uh, but it can happen days or weeks after an infarct and it's part uh, that's what we call as a Dressler syndrome okay, which appears to be an acute immune response it can also be caused by uremia it can be caused by uh, radiation to the chest wall 
rheumatic fever. Okay? Uh, and then we have lupus erythematosus, trauma, and those are the things that can cause acute fibrinous pericarditis. Uh, for pericarditis, our patients would complain of a sharp, constricting pain. And uh, when you are going to auscultate it, you would hear what they call as the pericardial friction drop. Okay. Our last slide for today's session would be the constrictive pericarditis. Okay. So, for this particular slide, slide 89, you have to make sure that you uh, move uh, around the slide. This one would be a myocardium, okay? uh, characterized by the presence of those cardiac myocytes. And then, because this is constrictive pericarditis, you have to look into the pericardial wall. So this would be the pericardium, identified with the fibroadipose tissue. Okay? And again, this particular area is very thick. Okay? So you have a pericarditis. Uh, this is constrictive uh, because this would show the presence of uh, fibros fibrocalcification or fibrosclerosis. Uh, the most common antecedent for a constrictive pericarditis would be uh, a history of pericarditis. So this would be uh, a uh, caseous pericarditis. You can see the presence of granuloma and uh, giant cell, lung Hans type. Okay, so let's try to look at this one. So this is the granuloma formation. Okay, you have the presence of epithelial dysocytes, okay, and then you have the granuloma. Okay, this one is your clue. Okay, that it's tuberculosis, with the presence of Langhans type giant cell. Uh, you go around with the uh, other areas. Okay. So you can see the presence of multinucleated giant cells okay. areas of fibrosis and this is constrictive pericarditis so there's a type of cardiomyopathy that can happen with constrictive pericarditis and that's what we call as restrictive cardiomyopathy okay because the heart is unable to uh, to expand fully and it will lead to a decrease in the cardiac output. Okay, so those are the slides that we have for this session. So stay safe and good night.